Um, I first started cutting ladies and gents here, and then after a few years of doing that, I realised my passion in barbering, and I wanted to focus on that alone. So I got a job in the local barber shop aside from the uh, salon, and then after a few years of doing that, I wanted to open up my own shop, which I'd wanted to do since I was about 15 when I first started cutting hair. So um, just kind of saved up, worked hard, aimed for it, and then found a good location and just went for it. That was a year and a half ago. Okay, perfect. And yourself, Mark? Uh, barber in about 20 years now. I uh, started barbering in a place called Ironwood State Penitentiary. I had stolen a few cars uh, on the Mexican border. We used to take them over back and forth, innocent enough. <laughs> And I uh, mean, I did a few haircuts uh, there, and my brother does hair, my mom does hair, and uh, I followed suit uh, shortly after. And I've been uh, from San Diego, California. Cut hair all over the States, Mexico, Argentina, and then I came to the UK. That's a lie. I went to Ireland first. I uh, had a shop in Ireland, uh, it was a collective with the Waldorf in Ireland, and then uh, went to Manchester, worked for some dude down there, and then came up here, met Benjamin, and here I am in Edinburgh. I, you, you'd be surprised how much we have in common, actually, Benjamin and I, right? <laughs> uh, between music, upbringing, skateboards, rock and roll, whatever. Um, I was turned on uh, to Benjamin through a mutual friend when I left Manchester. I was going to go to Milan, he goes, no, 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 you got to look for, you got to go to Benjamin's first. Um, he's been looking for a barber for about a year, and then as soon as I met him, I was like, I'd work for this guy in a minute. And evidently, the feeling was mutual, and I started uh, right away. We do a big mix, like, I think it's great that we cut pretty much guys right across the board, so you get young kids coming in, wanting like, pretty crazy extreme haircuts, you get all the business guys coming in, get some old timers coming in as well, and they all appreciate the shop for like, probably slightly different aspects to it, but they all come in here and feel at home, but um, I and Mark both prefer doing a bit more old school, really sharp, sharp haircuts, um, just sticking to tradition really. Yeah, I wouldn't say we're really like an agenda shop just for like tattoo cool guys. There's no, in Edinburgh, I don't think there's a big market for that, but I think 60, maybe even 70% of our clientele are just regular fucking dudes. You know what I mean? Just want safe, bet, haircut, three on the sides, scissor on top, get the wife off their back, boss, you know, nothing extreme for work or whatever. And uh, they're in, they're out, and it's, it's easy enough, easy money to me. It's just a good neighborhood barber yeah. shop. And then of course you got the hipsters who want the, their, their haircut, that one haircut. <laughs> they cut. The, the look, yeah. So it's a nice office to be in. It's pretty true. chilled out. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's good just cutting hair, as Mark was saying, like cutting hair, having a laugh, there's nothing else really to it. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel or do anything. I feel bad for these guys who actually got fucking jobs. You know what I mean? Even now, still, it took a few years before People would pay me for the haircuts. I did so many free haircuts when I was younger that when I finally got a job in a barbershop and they would pay me for it, I was like, oh my god, thanks, man. Like it was a big deal. And I, sometimes I still feel like that. Because I'll do a haircut 15 minutes and, and you get paid and you get tipped on top of it. It's like, oh, that was easy. And you're at work. You know what I mean? That's all. It's still 20 years into it. It's still new to me. You know what I mean? It's not cool. Okay. I forget and I work sometimes. If the guys sound, you know what I mean? There's good music playing. The barbershop has atmosphere, and I forget how to work. You know I mean, I might as well be in my fucking kitchen cutting my brother's hair or something. You know? so it's a sanctuary as well as a workplace. Yeah. Okay. And talking about equipment, because obviously you're from uh, America, Mark, and the equipment. America. <laughs> and the equipment in the UK is very different from America. Tell me what your, your thoughts are on English equipment versus First of American. All, in the States, yeah. the rule is if a guy's using plastic guards, you get the fuck out of that shop right now. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Plastic guards. When I came here, I was like, what in the fuck are these guys doing? Plastic guards are the most unreliable set of equipment possible. I mean, you always use, we use Osters in the States. I mean, that's it, full stop. That's it. I mean, anything plastic is just, you know, it's, it's, um, 
We have chains over there called Great Clips, Super Cuts, and all these little places that you'll find them. They're as popular as fucking Tesco or Spar. They're just they're everywhere, and they're terrible. And and uh, you get to walk out. You know what I mean? So generally, the rule is plastic guards to find a new shop. To okay. And in terms of American equipment and uh, and English equipment, what's your thoughts? Well, the new, from the, new barbers are, are obviously going to experiment, and then I see them online, I see them on Instagram, I see them on YouTube, and they got every fucking set of clippers under the sun. They're like, check out these. Da, 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 da. I got three. You know what I mean? I got the Osters, I got my walls, and I got my edgers. That's it. You know what I mean? But as far as the equipment goes, it's all the same. It's all they all come from the same source. Uh, different styles would, rec would require different um, uh, equipment, obviously. If I'm if I'm doing a, a if I'm doing fades all day, I sure as hell don't want to use plastic guards. I don't want to use osters. That's just clip, zip, clip, zip, and if they blend all into each other, it's, the work's already done for it. Other than that, it's just what kind of conversation you got. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what separates you from the other bar right on the street, you know? That you speak English. Okay. It's, yeah, it's pretty important. Mm -hmm. And you, Benjamin, how are you finding using US clippers as opposed to English clippers? Yeah, they're really different. I prefer them. Um, I feel they get a bit of a sharper, cleaner finish. And as Mark was saying, since I used my ulcers, which Mark turned me on to fading hair, and it's just like cutting through butter or a hot knife, it's much better. So, yeah, definitely steering away from the plastic arms, which I kind of started off using. But yeah, there's a massive difference. Okay. I mean, this uh, aversion to plastic guards, this is the first time I've heard that, so it's quite an interesting conversation and the reason you don't like the plastic guards you, you, is it an inconsistency in the haircut what if you take a pair of osters this is one man's opinion don't get me wrong there's i know plenty of great outstanding barbers who use plastic guards and no way am i trying to be some macho douche this is one man's opinion and benjamin likes them as well they just seem to bog out if you get if the, if the hair is too uh if it's too thick and especially when it comes to fading hair modern Modern haircuts that we're doing today, uh, there's nothing better than, than to fade hair, than I, in my opinion, than, than Oscars. Because I come from San Diego, where you got the Marine Corps, you got the, all, the Navy, you got all these military guys. Seventy, maybe eighty percent of your clients are just going to be high-end, and everyone has a grooming standard. You know, I mean, there's so much law enforcement, border patrol, ICE agents, fucking FBI, all these guys are over there. You're doing these these regulation haircuts all day, and there's there's this as far as speed and it, volume. If you're doing that much, you want something fast, quick, and reliable. You don't want to sit there and fiddle fuck with a bunch of plastic guards. You know what I mean? To me, personally. And God, what happens if something comes off and you, you fucking you peel a guy? Can you imagine? I don't know. That's just, that's me. Genuinely happy with the way it's going right now. Um, We're doing an interview. Chill right there for 90 more seconds for us. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a, yeah, two minutes that we the mic, so. Yeah, go. Um, yeah, I love it the way it's going just now. Me and Mark are busy all day, every day. We've got a great clientele coming into the shop. New clients, old clients coming back. Um, I've, I've never, ever, ever wanted to have a chain of shops. I've always wanted to have one shop and do it well. And to me, that's way more important than making big, big money and having a big chain of shops, that's not what I'm about at all. So at the moment, it's perfect as it is. So. Okay. And just last question, what would you say to other barbers who are considering using American tools or motherfucking non-plastic guards out there? <laughs> <laughs> um, I try it. As Mark was saying, it's one man's opinion. So I love my osters and super tapers, I use them all for different styles, different things. But at the end of the day, you use what you can cut hair with the best. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what clipper's cool or what's not cool or how you look while you're using them. As long as you give your client a fucking perfect haircut at the end of it, happy days. So yeah, I'd say use them. Them. Yeah, try them all, see what you like. We've all seen those videos of your, of your man, the Chinese dude, thousand years old, doing a flat top, doing a skin fade with just scissors. You know what I mean? We all sit there in awe going, Jesus Christ. So whatever gets the job done, I guess, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do, it, do whatever. Use a fucking butter knife. Huh? <laughs>